you have three days or more in the city. Welcome back to Mid Investors. And if you're new here, this is Tara from the channel She Saves, He Invests, They Travel, bringing to you personal finance stories and travel tips that work for ordinary people. And if you stay to the end, there might be a bonus. This video is not organized by neighborhood. That video is coming soon in 2024. So the top two things to do in Madrid go together, and I'm gonna do my best to explain them separately, but it might be impossible to separate them. That's because the best thing to do is to walk through Madrid, central neighborhoods, and plazas. The thing is, if you do one, you pretty much automatically do the other because the prettiest plazas are located mostly in the neighborhoods of Madrid city center. I recommend walking through the neighborhoods of Lava Pies, La Latina, Barrio de las Letras, Sol, Palacio, Malasaña, and Chueca. Okay, about the plazas. You're gonna be able to see Sol, Plaza Mayor, Plaza de la Villa, Plaza Santa Ana, Plaza de Oriente, and Pedro Zerolo without a problem. Those are probably unavoidable because they're right in the city center and they're popular tourist attractions. And they're great and you should absolutely spend some time in those plazas. But I'd also like to encourage you, if you have time, to check out Plaza 2 de Mayo in Malasaña, Plaza de Cascorro, Plaza de Olavide, Plaza Ramales, Plaza de Ángel in Barrio de las Letras, Plaza de Humilladero, Plaza de San Andres, Plaza de la Paja in La Latina, the Matadero, Plaza de la Villa de Paris and Plaza del Rey. Another great thing to do while you're in Madrid is to go shopping, especially boutique shopping, consignment shopping, luxury shopping, or antique shopping. Some of the best places to shop in Madrid are the boutiques in Barrio de las Letras. This is a very special neighborhood with more than 30 boutiques packed into a dozen streets in the literary district. In fact, this neighborhood is so special for shopping that I published three videos featuring its different boutiques. It's an absolute joy shopping here, and you will find so many unique items made by local artisans. You should also check out Gran Via and Fuen Carral. They're good for big chains like Guess, H&M, Primark, Intimisi, Pull & Bear, Zara, Tezanis, and Oisho. Puen Carral also has some boutiques too. Some of the clothing I am wearing in these shots are from the boutiques on Puen Carral. A lot of luxury brands and boutiques can be found in Salamanca, especially on Calle Serrano, but that area is far too expensive for me to shop. Another fun thing to do in Madrid is to see the city from its many rooftops. Especially Círculo de Bellas Artes, Jardín de Diana, and Rio Hotel. Check out our video about top rooftop spots in Madrid. I recommend Gourmet Experience in Corte Inglés, Radio Rooftop on top of the Mi Hotel, The Secret Garden on top of Salvador Bachiller, Doña Luz on Calle Montera, Le Tavernier, Ginkgo Restaurant and Sky Bar, Asia Sky Bar, Doña Luz, and Jardines de Sabatini. I don't even know where to start with the food in Madrid. Madrid is my favorite place to eat in the world. I'm going to have to do a whole separate video dedicated just to the food in Madrid. I am showcasing some of the food I like here. Of course, check out the food at the aforementioned gourmet experience at the top of Corte Inglés. Casa Tony, drink some horchata, especially in the summer. In winter, have some churros y chocolate in San Ginés or hot chocolate in, at El Riojana. Dine at the oldest restaurant possibly in the world called Botín. Try violet candies at La Fabrica Real or La Violeta. Have some wine pairings with lunch at Vinoteca Muratín. My favorite street to tapas crawl on is Cava Baja in La Latina because it has more than 50 tapas bars. If this information overload is too overwhelming for you, try booking a wine and tapas tour like we did. 
We used Get Your Guide, which is the official sponsor of this video. And we booked the original tapas crawl and absolutely loved it. We are showing you how to do it step by step here. Get Your Guide unlocks unforgettable experiences for travelers. Get Your Guide offers more than 60,000 curated experiences in more than 3,600 destinations worldwide, from tickets to top sites to one of a kind local tours. Their experiences are provided by knowledgeable local experts. Their app allows you to book and download and access your tickets with no printing required. I found their app to be super convenient. They offer 24 seven support, free cancellation up to 24 hours before the event. It has a real skip the line value. And here are some highlights of the activity we booked through Get Your Guide. It was called the original tapas crawl. Veda region wine, okay? It's a cloud, right? We call it tapón, cloud. So the beer does not oxidate. Huh? Salud, cheers. Salud. Salud. Calamares. Chistorra. Con pimiento del padrón. Usually like this, double size. But this is at the end of the process, 32 hours process. ¿Cómo fue? ¿Todo bien? Excelente. Quiero capturar la tapa. If it was half as good as this one, I think you'll have a good time. A lot of nice little bars in Madrid. Is it going to be in this area or in a different one? I'm not in it. I was in it. I was in it. Another great thing to do while you are in Madrid is to visit one of Madrid's many parks. Madrid has more than 40 parks, but you are most likely to visit the Retiro because of its size, beauty, and convenient location. We urge you to check out at least one more park while you are in Madrid, though. The Retiro is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with several gardens and a 400-year-old Mexican conifer tree. And... This is a fountain dedicated to the devil. It actually has a statue of the fallen angel on top of it. How many cities have a statue dedicated to the devil? Or a fountain dedicated to the devil? I mean, what could be better than that? Chris thinks Casa de Campo is better than the Retiro. You can take a teleferico over Casa de Campo and see that it's much bigger than the Retiro and much wilder. It's actually bigger than the entire city center of Madrid. You can swim in its public pools, have lunch by the lake, run or bike on its many trails, or visit its zoo, aquarium, or amusement park. You know what's better than that, Timid Investors? An ancient Egyptian temple, that's what. Yep, Madrid has an authentic Egyptian temple in the middle of the city for crying out loud. It dates back to 2,200 years ago. A lot of people like to visit the Templo de Debord at sunset. There are a lot of options regarding the nightlife of Madrid. There's more than 500 bars and there are tons of smaller nightclubs and even mega clubs. As far as live performances go, you have great flamenco options, opera, theater, and orchestra. We like listening to live music and really enjoyed our time listening to jazz at Central in the Las Letras neighborhood. There are at least eight other jazz clubs in Madrid to choose from. Check out the link in the description below. You have to visit a museum while you are in Madrid. Madrid is the place to go if you want to see art. See the original Picasso's Guernica at the Reina Sofia. Tour the works of Velázquez and Goya in the Prado, or visit my favorite the Museum of Lope de Vega. The Museo de Lope de Vega is actually a tour of the famous author's perfectly preserved house, exactly as it was 400 years ago. For some more obscure but still great choices, check out the Ateneo and the Museo de Romanticismo. Check out a local market while you are in Madrid. The city has 46 of them. We include a link in the description below to all of them, but my favorites are Mercado Cebada in La Latina, Anton Martin in Lavapiés, of course, the famous San Miguel near the Plaza Mayor, Mercado de San Anton 
in Chueca. I especially love their rooftop terrace. Mercado San Ildefonso. And the Rastro, or El Rastro, an unbelievable pop-up flea market which has occurred every Sunday morning since 1740. It occurs where the La Latina neighborhood meets Lava Pies. I'm going to do a separate video exclusively focusing on Madrid markets. They're that incredible. A favorite thing of mine to do is to check out indie bookshops and libraries. There are a ton of them in Madrid. There is a Feria de Libros, which is a set of stalls that always has used books for sale right outside the southwest corner of the Retiro, but it gets really going in the summer where they lay out benches, tables, throw pillows, and serve drinks. Also, there is this bookshop called Cafebreria Ad Hoc that has a cafeteria where you can eat, drink, and read all day, but you have to purchase a book to hang out there. Links in the description below. And because you stayed until the end, here is your bonus. This is a list of other unique things that you can do in Madrid. And there's more links in the description below that tell you about specific exhibitions or places that you can go in the city that are special and only known by locals or not frequented by very many people, but they're still extra special. I have two separate videos on Madrid pools that I'll link in the description below. They're rooftop pools, so they're private, and the prices for those start at 25 euros and up. But Madrid has more than a dozen public pools that only cost a euro or two, and they're also an amazing experience, but they're only open in the summer. Another thing I like to do are the language exchanges, which are all over the city. My favorite is the one at the Cambridge Club in Plaza de España. They're all free. You just basically go to a bar or go to a lounge and buy a drink and then you find somebody who speaks the language you want to learn. The language exchange at the Cambridge Club gives you flags for the language you speak and the language you want to learn. So it's easy to just hop from table to table starting and ending discussions whenever you feel like it. And some of these exchanges have activities and board games. They're usually in re really beautiful and unique or interesting locations around the city.